Good morning, everybody. I am Commissioner Julisha Mantisha Falcon, first vice president and reporter for Argentina. Uh, we are in the case 14059, Maria and his son. We are here with uh, Madam Flaya Provesan, the reporter for women's rights, Margaret May Malcoli, and the reporter for children's rights, Ara Semena uh, Esmeralda Morsevera. I would like to greet the delegation of the states and the representatives of the civil society. And I would like to give the floor to Maria Sol Flanchar so that she can tell about the case. The present case is related to the violations of uh, the family rights and the right to um, a fair trial by Maria and his son, which had uh, which were addressed within the physical custody and adoption proceeding. The parties will not refer to the victims because of the non-disclosure of their identity, so they will re refer to as Maria and Mariano. The admissibility study on the merits of the case and this hearing wants to deepen on the allegations of the party and to receive information on the case at hand. We will also receive the declaration of the alleged victim president you have the floor again thank you so we will start with the declaration of maria the alleged victim and we are going to uh, for the non-disclosure of the victim we are not going to ask identification questions i would like to thank you maria for being here and i would like to to thank you for being in this difficult time i would like to give 10 minutes to the petitioners and then we will follow 10, 10 minutes for the state so the petitioners have the floor now good morning my name is Carmi Maidaga. I'm one of the lawyers of Maria. Um, I would like to thank the commissioners for this opportunity we are being granted of hearing the situation experienced by Maria. I would like to give the floor to Maria so that she can expose and I will make some questions to her so that she can tell us how is it that she came to know that you were pregnant in the first place and how things have started to happen. I am Maria. Hello. I found out I was pregnant when my mother took me to the maternity hospital and I was already pregnant with of six months. And since then, when I found out I was pregnant, the people, psychologists and social assistants tried to convince me and my mom that the best thing was for my son to be with another family. And you said that you were pregnant with six months before that my, your mother had taken you somewhere so as to see what was happening to you yes she took me to a health center but she told me but they told me there that it was normal that my mother had not to be concerned because it was normal but the my my belly started to grow so my mother decide to talk to take me to the hospital and when they wanted to persuade you what is it that she, they tell you so as to persuade you to give your child for adoption they told me that i was too young that at this age i would not i would not have a boyfriend that i would not going to move on with my life as any girl or boy at my age and I and that my son was going to be better with another family that's what they told me 
and when your mother was persuaded, the rest of your family, what did they think about this? Well, they didn't want they didn't want me to to give it an adoption. They tried to look for help, but they didn't let them. Did they have any interview with somebody or did they make a complaint somewhere? Yes, they went to the court and they spoke with the judge and they told them, the judge told them, my, my grandmother was there and my, I, my aunt, and they said that they wanted to care, uh, take care of my son and the judge said that no, if they kept on insisting, they were going to um, keep my son. And as from that day, they started, they stopped insisting. And would you like to tell us what was uh, the birth like when you entered the hospital? Were you alone? Were you with somebody? Well, at that time, I had a hard time. I was alone all by myself. My mother couldn't be there. She was not allowed to, nor anybody else. And uh, I had a, a really hard time. The psychologist entered the room she was not from anybody from my family and i didn't understand what she was doing there my family was downstairs but they couldn't come up they weren't allowed the police even the police came and they and they were ex expelled from the hospital so i was there on my own all by myself once mariano was born were you allowed to see him no no, they didn't let me see him. No, he was taken before before I, I went out from the hospital. And when I wanted to, to know him, they sent me a picture. It was blurred. I cannot see anything. And it was... A disappointment for me because I wanted to see him and they sent me a picture just a picture and once you were discharged you were taken to the maternity so as to enroll him in the civil registry would you like to tell that about us about that yes at that time I was I went there, I was called upon so that he would get his ID and I, I had, uh, they had already chosen the name. They didn't even ask me whether I, it was, I was okay with that name. I wanted to, to give him another name, but he had, they, they had already thought everything. Yes, everything was written beforehand. And then you were called upon by the court when Mariano was already six months old. Do you remember what happened that day? Yes, I was. They they came and to look for me at home. They I, I was taken to the court. They told me that it was for to give my son in adoption. And I said that I didn't want to give him for adoption, that I wanted to have him with me. I told them that I wanted to have him with me, that I wanted to, have, to, to be with him, that I wanted to care for him. And they got really angry. And as from that moment, they didn't help me with anything else. They left me alone. And when your mom asks for the restitution to the tribunal, to the court, and you appear before court, you start seeing Mariano because, because there was a, an order by the Inter-American commission that allowed you to see Mariano 
Can you tell us about those encounters? Where did you visit Mariano? Well, they are always in the court. Always with more people observing us, looking at us. We were never free. We were never allowed to be free. My son was also uncomfortable with those people there. And there was a stage where there was an intervention by people of the university. It was supposed to be some other kind of work. What, how was the stage like? Well, it was weird because they, they had to help me and they didn't help me. A year went by and during that year, I couldn't get my child to get her, her grandmother. She couldn't, he couldn't meet anybody. They, or, they were making up excuses all the time. Could you spend your birthday or your son's birthdays with your child? No, never. The couple were with them whenever we were together. And where do you see Mariano? I see him at his home, but it's still uncomfortable for both of us because I would like to take him to a square or to share some time with him, just the two of us. And what is it that you want, Maria, for your future and for your son's future? I want, the, I want the best. I want him to be with me because nobody asked me whether I wanted to, to give him an adoption. And the only thing I want is that, is to be with him and be his mother. Is there something that you would like to say to the commissioners? No. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Carmen. Thank you very much, Maria, for your words and for being here. I will grant the floor to the state during 10 minutes. Thank you, Madam President. Madam Vice President, I would like to thank the commission for the call of this hearing, which is essential for resolving this case. I would like to thank Maria for her testimony. I would like to say, Madam, Pres Madam Vice President, that the, you, that the Secretary of Human Rights of uh, the nation will use the floor and of the province of Santa Fe. So I will grant the floor to Gabriela Kletz. Kletz. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. The state won't make any question. I would just like to give the floor to Maria and to give this time to Maria, whether if she thinks that there is something to add. Thank you. So I will ask Maria and Dr. Carmen whether they want to make up, make use of this time. Would you, do you have something to add? Is there something that you think is important to say? Do you want to tell us anything else? If you are feeling well, would you like to tell us how is your relation with Mariano? How is he when he sees you? Well, he's really kind. And when he sees me, he's really happy. He waits for me. I really I get up really early every time I visit him. And he says that he's always waiting for me or probably I am late. And, and he says me, I thought you were not coming or something like this. And we have a very good relationship. We get on very well. Thank you, Maria. So I will use the five minutes granted for the Inter-American Commission since the state has not made use of the floor. We are going to have some minutes. I will give the floor to the second vice president, Flavia Piavesan. Do you have any question, any comments as to this? Thank you, Madam Vice President and Country Rapporteur. I would like to greet 
in a very affectionate manner to Maria, to the representatives of the state as well. And I have three questions for the state because according to the petitioner, there's a clinic history of Maria, which is not isolated. There are uh, reports or complaints of several irregularities that show that an institution which allowed for the illegal delivery of children for their adoption. So they accepted as valid the consents that the law didn't authorize. So the first question for the state based on the warranties of non-repetition, which are the measures to, to prevent the illegal delivery of children and whether there are in investigations as to the uh, delivery of Mariano to this couple. And three, the services of personalized attention, because we heard there was a dialogue between Maria and a psychologist, but everything was very violent, every very brutal. And her son was taken up abruptly and not as an adoption should be. So I would like to get to know which are the services of attention for pregnant women um, such as Maria, who was at that time 14 years old. Thank you, Madam uh, Vice President. This is the time to make the question for the petitioner. The commissioner posed some other questions for the state. So the questions for the petitioners, I would ask the uh, commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena whether she has questions for the petitioner now. Hello, in my capacity as reporter for the rights of children, a message of solidarity for Maria. I understand the pain, the anguish, but also your right. And I really acknowledge you for being here. I really, uh, I celebrate that you are joined by women that are aware of your right to live in family together with your son and the right so that you as a mother can have back your son. You have said that at this time when there's a proceeding with the psychologist your mother was not present. There was an appointment with the psychologist. You asked her to be present and your mother was not present. What is the explanation that they gave you? Why was your mother not there? Can you answer that? And I can I make another question afterwards? Probably you can make your two questions, then I will give the floor to Margaret and at the end Maria will answer. Okay, okay, so I will make one more question. So that she can have it in mind. The other question was whether you had knowledge of this document that the state that the state drafted saying that you were delivering, voluntarily delivering Mariano to a couple, to, to somebody else. So which was the proceeding carried out? What is it that they did? In or did you see that document? Did they explain that document to you, the content of that document to you? And what is the relation 
that you have had in all proceedings and in all the actions in which you had to participate with the children's directorates or with the judges. How have you felt? How old are you and how have you felt in all these proceedings that you have to take up since the pregnancy until this adoption process proceeding? Thank you, Commissioner. But we are running out of time. But since the state did not to, uh, take up uh, its time, I'm going to take three more minutes. Commissioner May Macaulay, you have any specific question for the petitioners? Yes, I do, Madam Vice President. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and I, <clears throat> I welcome Maria and the um, representatives and the representatives, our representatives, and the representatives of the state. And um, Maria, thank you for your evidence. It must have been very difficult. Um, I just want to ask, I think I have three questions too. Could you tell us, um, I understand that you asked for a DNA to be done, um, a DNA test to be done about to identify your, your child's biological father. Did, was that done? And if it was done, does he have any relationship with Mariano? Uh, that's my first question. The second question is, has your mother, Mariano's grandmother, um, been having any relationship at all with her grandson um, um, since she initially accompanied you to, and took you to the hospital uh, when, when they found out you were pregnant? And the third question is, is uh, sim uh, similar to um, uh, my sister Esmeralda was, that at the age of 12, um, what did you understand by the word adoption when it was used to you? Thank you. Gracias, eh, Commissioner Macaulay. Yo solo tengo Thank una... you, Commissioner Macaulay. I have one question for Maria. During the whole process, uh, which you are fighting for your son to get him back, uh, what uh, how how you have you been able to deal with expenses? Uh, who is paying for the expenses? Uh, we have five minutes, and after that we will have another round, so that you can intervene based on uh, the questions you are able to answer. Thank you. You have five minutes now. You ask whether your mother was present when you were having the appointment with the psychologist. Uh, the psychologist was present during the delivery, where the in the um, delivery room, let's say, not before. I wanted my mom to be there, but I don't know if she did not want to be there or she was not allowed to be there something happened in between, but it was alone with the psychologist when I gave, gave birth and with the nurses. That was all. The second question, uh, please let me know if I'm forgetting something. If there was any explanation regarding the document she had to sign, if anybody saw, explained to her what the document content was about. No, they did not explain things very well. They told me that I had to sign it because that was the agreement that they had with my mother. That's what they told me. And that um, my son was going to be taken care of by family. That's all they say at that time. The next questions were, one was related to the grandmother. Um, um, whether Luisa, your man, met Mariano, uh, whether she supported you during this process. Yes, she was able to meet 
him. I took her with me. She was not allowed to go. Nobody, no member of my family can be there. Uh, my son has not met his cousins or other family members. I think that my mother was able to see him three times. I took her with me, but then I was um, um, told off because of that. But and did your mother support you during all these complaint proceeding? Yes, she has supported me a lot. I told her that I wanted to have my son with me and she did everything that was possible so that I could be with my son. Commissioner also asked regarding your age and if you understand the ter what the term of adoption was. And also I asked about the expenses. Now I am 20 years old. And the DNA. When he, when I was 12, I did not understand what was happening. I didn't know. But at the time, I didn't understand what was happening to me. Um, after six months uh, or six months later, I realized that I had been a mom and, that it, and I wanted to have my son with me. As regards uh, health expenses, legal expenses and so on, uh, the state paid for the expenses, uh, especially the health expenses when Maria gave birth. It's, uh, the expenses were covered by the municipality of the city of Rosario. The legal expenses and expenditures are paid by the sponsors. Commissioner May Macaulay made a question regarding the DNA tests. Do you want to talk about this? No. Uh, first, uh, she was appointed a lawyer and she requested a DNA test. Uh, the judge uh, dismissed that request. She, she told uh, Maria that she should initiate the corresponding proceeding. And in the middle of this legal fight, uh, Maria requested for the affili affiliation or um, trial to be started, and that's when the DNA test was requested. Thank you. I also ask what she faced or what she had to face during the proceeding. She had to do a lot of paperwork and a lot of things. How have you felt? I felt really bad because every time that I asked for something, I never had any possibility of having anything. Okay, thank you, Maria. Thank you, Carmen. We have only a few minutes for so many questions, but that's the way a hearing works. But we are happy to give you some space to learn about your story. Now we have the next part of the hearing that is the allegations. Each party will have 15 minutes, the petitioners will start and then the state. And maybe in the allegations, uh, the questions of Commissioner Piovesan can be answered. Let's give 15 minutes to the petitioners now. We understand that uh, based on all the documents that have been sent to the commission, we have documents from state authorities and from the case that we can see that there is a violation of the rights of Maria and also of the rights of Maria's mother because they are women, because they are poor and because Maria was a child and they have not the adequate legal advice. And therefore I would like to present a brief because they uh, submitted a brief as, uh, saying that they were willing to give their child in adoption. But Maria and her mother did not present this brief before the judicial authorities, but the defender of girls, boys and adolescents at the time was the one that presented the brief, which is illegal. 
uh, which was illegal. The judiciary rules that the boy should be given to the couple uh, Lopez and without no legal ground. And this was proved by Maria's statement. Luis and Maria went to the court and always requested uh, the child to be uh, back to his family. Um, the uh, judiciary said that they were protecting the child and they say that a special proceeding should be implemented that has to do with the resolution of the adoption of the child. Um, the resolution is full of prejudices and there is no, uh, has no legal basis. Seven years later, we are still trying to solve if the proceeding should be opened regarding the adoption because the consent should be considered null. Now, this is being, uh, the case is being uh, addressed by the Supreme Court of Justice of the province of Santa Fe. And we would like also to bring this to the commission in order to have a solution for this situation. Because right now, Mariano is living with the couple. They decide about all the aspects of Mariano's life. And that is illegal. And Maria is only authorized to have these control visits. But the relationship between Maria and Mariano is a love bond. And nobody should deny that bond. The Argentine Republic has constitutional, conventional, and domestic regulations to recognize Maria and her child as rights holders. However, in spite of the regulations based on discretionary criteria, stereotypes, prejudice, health authorities, judicial authorities, uh, instead of guaranteeing support in order to improve or to support the Familia Maria, they decided to give the child uh, for adoption. The state prevented two children to live together and violated the right to family and the corpus juris of the rights of the child and also the right to a fair tri trial. The right to a family of Maria and her son is protected by the American Convention in its articles 7, 11, and 19, also article 9 and 16 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The mutual uh, living or both of the the fact that both uh, children live together should be considered, taken into consideration the best interest of the child. Law 61 and Law 1266-667 indicate that um, children should be protected uh, through public policies and the protection of rights should be a priority. The provincial public defender that is kind of an ombuds person should uh, protect the rights of the child, but cannot initiate personally on its, on its capacity the shadowization of a case. So we see that there is a violation of Article 7 and 16 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The Hellman case explains uh, the importance of the right to family. In, in spite of the weekly meetings that are always under the look of a third party, Maria and her son have been able to build a part, a tiny part of their family life. The right to fair trial has been violated that is established in articles 8 and 25 of the American Convention. The court did not hear Maria. That should have been the first judicial act and it did not guarantee that she received the appropriate legal advice. A year after the beginning of the proceeding, Maria was heard by the judicial uh, defender, and she explained before the court that Maria did not want to give the child in adoption. Now, 
uh, her request was not taken into account, into account and the judge has not explained why this is like this. So therefore, there is no legal response within a reasonable time. Also, the best interest of the child that has been quoted by the judiciary as a void aspect should be considered. And this means that Maria and her son should be allowed to live together and not the right of the child not to be separated from her mother or his mother. Now I would like to talk about the relationship between a girl of 13 years old and her son in spite of all the barriers that she's facing. She has been able to build a strong bond. I would like to put Maria uh, on a previous uh, statement. I have met my son, we have a strong relationship and we enjoy being with each other. In 2014, Mariano was born and Maria is not allowed to see him. Some days later, they went to the office of the registrar to re register Mariano's and she had to uh, give him away. In 2015, Maria requests to meet her son and she requested a DNA test to uh, recognize who was the father of his child. The judge um, establishes that the DNA test should be conducted, but does not make any pronouncement regarding Maria's request to meet her child. Uh, a year later, there is a judge that determines that the mother and the child should meet. Uh, Maria is able to meet uh, her son in 2016. Um, weekly meetings of two years of two hours duration. These meetings were always monitored. Then uh, Maria was allowed to meet. Uh, when Maria was allowed to meet his son, her son, she had to be with uh, the adoptive mother and with uh, a social worker. Then. There were some proceedings that were started so that the child could meet her grandmother and the rest of the members of the family. Um, it was necessary or it was requested for the child to go to Maria's home. There was kind of a mediation, but nothing. And there was no outcome. And therefore, Maria requested for the meetings to be held at her home because of that. Eight months elapsed until Maria was able to see her son. And then there was a resolution so that the meetings were conducted at a judicial office. In addition, in 2018, the judge ordered a new system of visits, two hours every week that were monitored. In February, 2020, uh, marriage and Maria should visit a professional. That is what was ordered to a psychologist uh, to agree on what the child should be told. And the meetings, uh, and she ordered that the meetings should be conducted in the house of the couple. But Maria did not agree to this. Also, uh, Maria was allowed to take her son to the school to school, but that was not possible. There were some delays because of the pandemic, but that is the system established by the judge. Maria has been very clear about her desire to have his son, her son back. All that I have said is proved in the briefs and in the different documents presented before the courts and before the commission. We would like to conclude with the request of reparation for the victims, Maria and her son, according to Article 63.1 of the American Convention, and we would like to stand out three aspects. First, which is strictly humane that the state should warranty to adopt all measures to uh, 
reunite Maria with his son, the state should adopt the adequate measures for the consolidation of the bond with the extended family and to so that both can have the material resources and the conditions that are determined and to warrant the psychological treatment not given by uh, the state uh, unless Maria agrees to them and to consolidate the relationship, this relationship between mother and son. Economic aspect, material damage, all judicial expenses have not been established but are do not represent but represent very important sums and amounts they can be justified our professional activity has been pro bono from the beginning and it will keep on being that way intangible damage. We understand that the damage caused to Maria and her son won't be repaired in any way. It's impossible to do that because they are so profound and they have happened during childhood. So it's impossible to uh, have a comprehensive compensation. But the modification of certain conditions of her life would, would channel Maria and her son in uh, better uh, in a better position. Maria is highly vulnerable. During all these proceedings, she has been a child or adolescent, poor women. She has had the opportunity to study and work and she has seen her child in different opportunities. Her childhood has been interrupted and her adolescent has uh, she she had to have her adolescence trying to recover her son without leaving the life that she had planned for herself she needs uh, work she needs a house she needs money to live with her son by reason of the of the provision of the Argentinian state we believe that we can reach an agreement so as to um, cover the intangible damage so that she can start a new life different to the life she has today we also would like to state that we have other um, other requests by the states, the recognition of the responsibility for the reaching of her rights and for not having warranted with priority the exercise of the rights of childhood, then initiate and conduct efficiently criminal investigations, administrative and disciplinary investigations pertinent to the case at hand and determine and sanction the people responsible for those actions. Third, Im implement training courses for judges, defenders, uh, prosecutors, social assistants and other uh, officials of the provinces relay of the province related to the administration of justice trainings that have to do with the human rights standards and the uh, rights of children and adolescents and the principles of non-discrimination. Implement similar training courses for all the people of the Secretary of Child and Adolescents, the Provincial Direction of uh, Children, uh, the Provincial Council of Children, the um, defenders of children and adolescents, the RAGA, which is the organization for the adoption, all of the for the province of Santa Fe, implement training courses for human rights for ch child and adolescent human rights in the institutions that uh, have that work with deliveries and birth and that work with the standards of human rights of child and adolescents refer to the consent 
in terms of medical practices, disposition of their body and per, and to and being accompanied and with the people they wish to be with. It's not going to be easy to compensate her. I would say it's impossible, but her life can be improved. The life of this girl that has been subjected to a power. Sorry, we are out of time and you will have another time or more room for comments. I will give the floor to the state for 15 minutes for their words. Good morning once more, commissioners. My name is Gabriela Kletzel. I'm the director of uh, human rights uh, of in the directorate of human rights in the nation. And then Lucila Pujol, the secretary of human rights for the province of Santa Fe will account for the actions that the province of Santa Fe has taken for Maria. I would like to uh, thank you for the opportunity. This case asks us to reflect on the duty of protection of the state on the right to identity, right to family and the right of children to be heard and to have their interest defended on in, in the processes that uh, have interference on their future. Even though the uh, responsibility of the state is unique, this case has particular uh, perspective because this is a concrete limitation by the executive branch to intervene in this case, which is has been in the judiciary for so many years, which is the provincial uh, judiciary, which adds greater difficulties. I would like to acknowledge the tireless fight that uh, struggle that Maria has been waging so that her so that she can have her son back and the possibility to for her to establish despite all hurdles a bond with her son this motivated the maria uh, elevated her complaint to the commission first through precautionary measures which were granted and then after a prosecution and the argentine states considers that this case is ready for decision it's ripe for decision we consider that this hearing has is an, an exceptional instance for maria to be heard and so that the commissioner can help her her case and the serious facts she had to face these facts allege are of great concern for the Argentine states and their authorities, which do, does not want to approve them or to um, accept them. This is the right of identity for Argentina. This is a symbol because it has to do with the right of, it has to do with the search of the macho grandmothers who are who were looking for their sons after they are after their losses the identity is a pillar over which the personality of a person is forged the inter-american court has established that the identity right is imposed and the right has to be respected their family relations according to the law and within illegal interferences and even though this is not a right only of children it has great importance during childhood in situations of great vulnerability maria gave birth to her son the people that were present in the birth without being aware of the of the situation she was living they insisted her so so that her would give away her son for adoption they uh, maria and her signed a document without a lawyer whether the adoption was granted the uh, this led to a proceeding which gave the the child for adoption the ch child was 
uh, handed into this family with the discharge of the clinic and the uh, family requested for the custody of the children of the child they said that maria had an emotional blockage and that the situation had generated a psychic a psychiatric uh, drama and maria had also expressed that she wanted to recover her son maria did not have lawyers in spite of this juncture maria appeared before the court with a lawyer and requested the, resti the restitution of the child and she asked to get to know him and to establish a bond with him. The court did not allow for this request to be granted and they established that the proceeding was about the adoptability of the child and assign a special tutor and Maria and the rest of the participants, the, the rest of the parties should want, should be notified. The lack of response to Maria and to their lawyers who have carried out a very uh, important work motivated the request of the, of the precautionary measures before the commission because they were in a situation of seriousness, urgency and irreparability because the elapse of time could imply an irreversible damage. So the Argentine state was uh, in order to adopt certain measures for the protection of the family, the identity of the child and her mother. And they uh, warranted that the right of Maria would be warranted due to her age and maturity. I would like to say before this hearing as a representative of the Argentine state, unfortunately what was ordered by the commission is not still uh, executed. Today, Maria has lots of difficulties to be together with her son, to go to her house and so that he, her son can have contact with her biological family. The requests for restitution of the child are still not so resolved by the judiciary of the uh, province of Santa Fe. Our country was already condemned or sentenced by the case Pomeron and Argentina learned from that experience and would like to avoid these kinds of situations. That is why the state, the Argentine state indicated that given the circumstances, the case is admissible. It, that it didn't propose any way of resolution so as to uh, so as not to avoid or not to prevent this case to, from being presented to the court the elapsing of time can be factors that can be used then to disregard the rights of maria and her son as the inter-american court has said the delay in the process can determine the irremediable case for the children for the interests of the children and their biological parents for the reasons exposed here and for the rights at stake and for the seriousness imposed by the delay the Argentine states asked the commission to uh, make a decision on this case uh, as soon as possible. I will give want to I will give the floor now to Lucila Pujol. Thank you. We cannot hear you. Sorry. You are right. Can you hear me? Okay, so I am Lucila Pujol, Secretary of Human Rights of the province of Santa Fe, and together with Dr. Fabricio Trocero, who is the lawyer coordinating the specific area of contentious uh, litigations of these uh, secretariats, we are taking the lead of this case since we took office. 
I took office as Secretary of Human Rights of the province in December 2019. And as from this, mo that moment, we started to devote our time to this case. Um, and this case was filed because of the decision of the previous administration of not uh, to follow this case. And uh, in coincidence with what Dr. Kletzer was saying, the government of the province of Santa Fe, we truly believe that the right to identity is a fundamental human right and that Maria's right to live together with her son, to have a relationship with him and to have raised him since the moment he was born is an inalienable right. And we, in the province, together with the lawyers which who were sponsoring her, we would like to account for the trajectory that we have been uh, doing. Obviously, it's not what we have, we would expect it because we wanted the child to be with her again, but we are not going to take responsibility for what the judiciary of the province is doing now. That is why we consider that the uh, complaint of the petitionary is admissible in the first place and that we are doing what is at hand at the secretary in order to uh, follow up this case. We said that we were going to, we wanted to have access to the reports to the proceedings, they didn't give us a copy and they didn't notify of the uh, notes of the proceeding. The only things that, the only documents that were granted to us were the ones that were given by our, by the lawyers who were the only ones who gave us the documents. And we didn't even have uh, an answer by the judiciary, we said, okay, how is it that we can approach Maria and how we can accompany the work of the lawyers who have been dealing with this case very well and because of their economic situation on her vulnerability because she is a girl and she comes from a vulnerable family. The Ministry of uh, Human Development in the province started to intervene so that it can assess the possible uh, follow-up measures. Among those measures, Maria was included in the program Santa Fe Mas for uh, to learn to sew, which is a program for um, grants. And this help, this is some kind of help so as to give her better conditions of life as was explained by her and so she can be trained so that she can have a future life together, together with her son. We hope it will be soon. There, there are connection issues by the speaker. Uh, Maria expressed that she wanted to have uh, some people uh, working with her, we worked with social assistance and we provided her with some social help she requested from the secretary. We uh, bought her new glasses and the payment of rent. And I'm saying this not only to say we are very good. I really understand that this is what we should do we have to take up for all those years in which she was not heard and she had not given she was not given a room for or a voice the 
state uh, we have we are new authorities as from 2019 and we have a different uh, vision about this topic and the vulnerable the breaching of her rights of maria and her sons in the secretary we also gave her a computer because during the pandemic she couldn't meet she couldn't meet personally and she didn't have how to communicate with him so we provided her with a computer so that she could meet via zoom with her son we also um paid for some uh, for the transport for her to go to see her son because sometimes she didn't have the economic resources so as to go and visit her son and some other things that have to do with request the son was uh, enrolled without her authorization in a private school maria was against that the lawyer needed some information the lawyers had access on how this enrollment had taken place and finally this was achieved so they could have access to such enrollment and i would like to say that i had had several meetings with the prosecutor of the state of the province of santa fe of the province and with the Secretary of Justice of the province, Dr. Somaglia of the executive branch, but who is really involved in this issue. And we, uh, they, uh, we provided our support for Maria, for her son, and for the lawyers because we have said so in several occasions. Thank you. We are already out of time. unas preguntas de la comisionada, pero tal vez en otra oportunidad. Gracias. So now we will give the floor to the petitioners for their replies. You have five, five minutes. Uh, to conclude, I think that after all that has been presented, uh, there is a violation of Maria's rights by the state of Argentina. And I agree with Ms. Trocero we have a problem because we have a state with separation of powers and at the same time we have a federal state and um, some uh, institutions or bodies cannot overlap the work of the others. And we understand that the national executive branch and the provincial executive branch can or cannot order uh, or give orders to the judiciary of the province of Santa Fe. Uh, the case of Maria has been examined by six judges so far. We have the lower courts, we have the chamber, and there is a resolution of the Supreme Court of Justice of the province of Santa Fe. I know that we believe that there is a behavior or an attitude of prejudice because Maria is a girl, young, poor girl. And the judicial system was used to keep Maria away from her son. And the judicial authorities use allegations that are not based in justice. And um, the national constitution includes international treaties, including the San Jose de Costa Rica Pact. So there is some hope because in spite of the fact that the judges of the province may deny uh, the role of the commission, they cannot do it. I'm saying this because the precautionary measure not was fulfilled 100%. And if the case is not solved, uh, we are going to go to the court. It, it's fundamental that the commission um, issues a decision on the case. 
we understand the importance of the judgments of the commission, such as in the case of Formen, Forneron, but Forneron could not see his daughter. But in this case, Maria has time, but Mariano is already seven years old, so we need to act promptly. Thank you. Um, the petitioner has concluded their presentations, so I would like to give the floor to the state for five minutes now. Now I would like to give the floor to uh, Dr. Lucila Pujol so she can complete what she was explaining. Thank you. I would like to say, to answer one of the questions made by the commissioners. I think that it was important to highlight uh, the Martin Hospital is a municipal hospital. It's not a provincial hospital. We consider that the hospital protocol is legitimate. And when we saw the case file and we found this, uh, everything that was going on, we communicated with the director of the provincial program, uh, program of sexual and reproductive health. And we have also communicated with the current minister of gender equality of the province in order for them to get involved. And the directorate of sexual uh, and reproductive um, health education should be involved because the protocol should be legal. Also, we are working with the children's protocol because taking into consideration what we, the information that we have received by the director of uh, the sexual and reproductive health uh, directorate, it's important that we uh, guarantee access to information for the victims. That is what I wanted to inform. There are some connectivity issues. Um, thank you. We would like to, we can send to you information in written to answer the questions presented by the commissioners. And I would like to uh, explain plain the position of the state of Argentina, of the national foreign ministry and the government of the province of Santa Fe. We need an urgent resolution and that this case is made a priority because we believe that the intervention of the Inter-American Commission and a merits report by the commission could have a great influence on a case in which time is key. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. So I will start now with the stage of questions by the commissioners. Now I'm going to give the floor to the reporter for the children for children's rights. Commissioner, Commissioner Arosemena, do you have any questions? No, uh, thank you, Commissioner. I would like to apologize because there was a problem with electricity over here. I did follow the meeting, but you were not able to see me. I just want to say that I'm really satisfied after hearing the comments of the state of Argentina. They are recognizing and they are complying. What's more, that's what's important. They are trying to comply with their duties regarding the human rights of girls, boys, and adolescents. I would like to highlight that recognition. We understand that there may, might be challenges in federal state, uh, states, but it's important to understand that the state of Argentina is responsible. The country, the nation is responsible for this violation. And the commitment of the state forces all the powers under its jurisdiction. And I think that the state showed that it is willing to advance on this matter. Maria, I think that you need to hug your colleagues 
in this fight because I think that we are in a very positive uh, path and that you will be able to consolidate your right very soon. And I want to send, uh, to send you this message. This has always been your rights, your right. And also it is Mariano's rights, the right to family, to have a family together. So that's all I wanted to say, Commissioner. Um, I'm really happy. I am sure that the country rapporteur is always going to promote and the Commissioner Margaret as rapporteur for women and I myself, we promote that this case and this report is a priority. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Margaret, do you have any questions or comments for the state or for the petitioners? Yes, Madam Vice President, I, I do indeed, because in my view, this case involves multiple, multiple discriminations uh, um, of both Maria, Mariano, the Ma Ma Maria's family uh, as well, and indeed the biological fathers. Um, so it is a very serious case. And I'm pleased the state mentioned the case of Punaran because I was the rapporteur judge on that case. And we did order the state that the father must be able to visit the child and have a relationship with his child. We could not say that the child had to be given over to him, but the court did that make that order uh, in when we sat in Barbados on the case. So I think I'm going to have to do some checks on what uh, has happened in that matter. Um, I, 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 I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure the state accepts the fact that the so-called document signed um, so, um, by um, Maria and her mother is null and void. Absolutely, because there is not a scintilla of evidence that they were, they, that they had a full explanation as to the effect of that document and the consequences of it. And Maria, as the biological mother, most should have fully understood it. And this was the state's duty to ensure that she did. Rather, what we have is there was a failure of the health personnel, the social services personnel, the, the adoption people, the judges who sat in the matters, just repeated, repeated acts of discrimination that went on and denial of their rights. So it, it is so very important. And to my mind, personally, it amounts to me as the kidnapping of Maria's child. So we really, I agree with my sister Esmeralda, we the commission now, at the request of the state, and I'm happy to see that the state uh, has come to that conclusion and what I heard from the state, um, we must move very quickly with a merits report in this matter and move on the matter um, for uh, Maria's sake and for Mariano's sake and for Maria's mother, the grandmother and her family's sake, all of them. Um, so I, I do um, enjoy the, um, all of us to move as quickly as possible for this matter to be resolved uh, and the violations dealt with. One question I wish to ask the state, was there any investigation on the judge's conduct and decisions in this matter? And if so, can we have the records of that? Uh, and, and the conclusion. And also, was there any investigation of the health personnel, the social services people, and the adoption people who were involved in the handing over of this child? And can we have the report of all those investigations? Um, um, so thank you, I think I'll uh, leave it there. Gracias, Commissioner. Commissioner Pio Besan, ¿tienes alguna pregunta? Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Piovesan, would you like to ask any questions to the parties? 
Thank you, first vice president. I would like to mention two things. First, I would like to say that I agree with the views of my colleagues. I would like to recognize the openness, the transparency, and the good faith stance of the state of Argentina. Also, the state's commitment to the inter-American system, uh, who recognizes that the international duty of the state is a single and indivisible one. But we see that there are some challenges regarding violations by the judiciary. And again, I would like to recognize um, the stance of the state, but there are some challenges. And I wanted to ask a question that was mentioned already by Commissioner Margaret that has to do with accountability, with investigation, because what happened with all that system? That all the failures led to uh, multiple and serious violations of the rights of Maria and Mariano. We identified patterns of discriminations based on gender, age, etc. And we see that this increases vulnerability of this group. And I would like to insist on prevention because this is not only about the judiciary, but also the executive branch in order to prevent the legal uh, handing over of boys, girls, and adolescents. Thank you, Commissioner. As rapporteur uh, for Argentina, I had some comments. I salute the position of the state, but I would like to ask about statistics because Maria's case is not an isolated one. I would like to know if the state has disaggregated statistics regarding intersectional discrimination that was already pointed out by the commissioners. Um, also, my colleagues have mentioned the following that has to do with the unity of the state in spite of the changes in administration. We have the duty to prevent. So, and that implies taking all the measures so that whatever the administration, the facts should not happen again. Everything that has to do with prevention and non-repetition guarantees. I think that's very important. We need to take into consideration the measures. Apart, uh, we need to understand what the prevention measures are, are so that this not, does not happen again. And I would like to thank Maria and I would like to thank also the group of lawyers that are supporting here. For me, you are doing a heroic and irrelevant job. Things shouldn't be like they were, but Maria's statement helped us make these dramatic situations visible. I think that continuity of violence of discriminations against girls, adolescents, young women, and older women is present all the time. And we see that there are different levels of discriminations against the mother, against Mariano, and against the grandmother. Now I would like to give five minutes to the parties. We will start with the petitioners. I don't know if you would like to make any additional comments. You have five minutes. Araceli, would you like to round up our presentation because you did not have enough time? Thank you. To be honest, we have discussed this issue a lot. We are really concerned about these vulnerable groups that have such a limited access to rights. In many cases, these groups do not know the rights that they have access to. But in the case of Maria, we need to have justice. I was listening to Commissioner Mantilla and I could say that Maria's case is just a sample because these type of situations of 
taking advantage of these vulnerable groups that have so many limitations, economic limitations, cultural limitations, and all sorts of limitations. Uh, let show us that society is divided into two. There is a part of the society that enjoys rights and can demand these rights before the judiciary and before other powers. And there are other groups that do not have access to these rights. And those groups need the support of the state. I think that it's essential and I agree with you. We fully agree that there should be measures that are uh, educational because things won't change. Um, things will change if we can modify the situation because there is a group that believes that take, taking children out of poor neighborhoods and having those children with them is a solution for humankind. It's a very painful story because, and it has no end because what Maria's case has shown and the situation of um, the grandmother and the great grandmother of this boy. What we see with their story is that it's a case that, that could have been resolved. Um, Everybody thought that everything was going to be solved, but we there was a lot of resistance because Maria decided not to sign any other paper. And that's the only strategy that they have left that is to delay things, to transfer the case from one court to the other so that time passed by. They are using that argument. They say that the child has been with other people for such a very long time, and they're going to say that it's very difficult for him to build a relationship with his mother. That's why we need the help of the state, because otherwise we are not going to have to be successful. I think that it is possible we have a close relationship with the Secretary of Human Rights of the province, Mrs. Pujol, and also with the representatives of the executive branch of the nation. And that's why we think that things can change and we trust on that. We're confident, but we believe that the commission should act promptly because at the provincial level, we only face barriers. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to the state for five minutes for their answers and notwithstanding that they can send us more information in written. Thank you. I would like to ask Dr. Pushol whether she would like to add something. Yes. Sorry. Um, thank you. It's very brief. I would just like to thank all the commissioners for their words, the petitioners for what they are saying as well. And I would like to say that we would like to uphold this commitment in relation to the measures and in relation to what was put forward and in and as to the follow-up and the assistance of Maria and the prosecutor informed that he would uh, request a meeting with representatives of the Supreme Court of the province that where, that is where the uh, case is now and the prosecutor committed or promised to inform the judges about the international case of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights so that 
they uh, can add that to their assessment of the case. I would like to add that the national state made it known to the province of Santa Fe, the existence of the international proceeding as well, and the fact that this hearing was going to happen. All of this was informed to the uh, court of uh, Santa Fe because we believe that this space is important to hear Maria, to get to know her uh, allegation. And here is present the secretary of boys, girls, and adolescents. I would like to ask um, Mr. Federico whether he wanted to say something. Good morning, everybody. I would like to thank you for the opportunity. Then I will extend in written what uh, the Argentine state has done in order to prevent these uh, uh, situations from happening. There uh, were bodies that were established so that they could assist the families so as to strengthen um, their right to maternity. And if they want to give away in, in adoption their child, they want or they try for that consent to be free and informed and their organizations are their bodies that control this as well. Unfortunately, this has not succeeded in the case at hand, but the provisions of the bodies are in place so as to avoid these kinds of situations where the consent or hearing the child was not um, as, as wished. Thank you. Federico, up to now, the Argentinian state's position and stance, we would like to reiterate our commitment to work in order to warranty the non-repetition of these cases and to warranty the competition of, of what is at stake in the case at hand. And we would uh, like to have a decision by the commission soon, and we believe that it will be very helpful for the case. I will remind the state to send the uh, questions or the answers to the questions in written. Just some words. We have treated several issues, the right to, ident to identity, right to non-discrimination. We mentioned some cases of the Polgan which speak about identity and childhood, but this case also speaks about, and we have to take this into consideration, the importance of recognizing the reproductive autonomy of women and the importance to hear girls as uh, holders of rights. The possibility of being or not a mother has to do with this. I would like to make a comment to, directly to Maria. I think that this in this hearing, Maria, you have spoken 20 or 30 minutes. It's unbelievable, unbelievable the amount of pain and the amount of force that we can hear in such such a few uh, such a short time we i would like to tell you maria that this is the first time that the inter-america commission has three uh, uh, women in the boarding and these and the girls and women have a very difficult time because of the discrimination they face. What you are doing here is very important. Your message to other women and to other girls that are seeing you right now. So I would like to thank you for that. I would like to thank you for your presence. Thank you. Thank you.